Namaskar, President Pranab Mukherjee addressed the nation today on the eve of the country's 67th Republic Day. In his address, the president said the democratic institutions have given the gift of continuity on the path of progress, establishing India as a rising power, an emerging global leader in science, technology, innovation, and startups. The president highlighted the Jandan Yojana, Digital India, Startup India, and Skill India programs. He also said that it was the bounden duty of lawmakers to pass laws and in terms of education, he appealed to universities to raise the bar and become world class to prepare the country for the fourth industrial revolution. He called terrorism pure evil and referred to dialogue as the civilized way to bridge disagreement. Announce. When President Pranam Mukherjee addressed the nation on the eve of the 67th Republic Day, he spoke his mind on a wide range of national and international issues. The President expressed grave concern over terror spreading to different parts of the globe. He also advocated dialogue to resolve outstanding issues with neighbours. But the Commander-in-Chief also made it clear that talks and terror cannot go together. There is a civilised way to bridge disagreement, dialogue, ideally should be a continual engagement, but we cannot discuss peace under a shower of bullets. President Mukherjee referred to terror as cancer and reiterated India's long-held stand that it cannot be differentiated between good and bad. Terrorism is inspired by insane objectives, motivated by bottomless depths of hatred instigated by puppeteers who have invested heavily in havoc through the mass murder of innocents. This is war beyond any doctrine, a cancer which must be operated out with a form scalpel. There is no good or bad terrorism. It is pure evil. The President warned that if the world fails to combat terror effectively, it will move towards an age of chaos. He referred to the global economic downturn, saying despite 2015 being a year of challenges, India has become the fastest growing large economy in the world. This year, with an estimated growth rate of 7.3%, India is poised to become the fastest growing large economy. Contraction in global oil prices has helped maintain external sector stability and control domestic prices. Despite occasional setbacks, industrial performance this year has been strong. In his Republic Day Eve address, the President also said that India is fast emerging as a global leader in various fields whose economic success is the envy of the world. He referred to Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana, Sansad Adash Gram Yojana, Digital India, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana and Manrega as government schemes which have helped empower people. He also mentioned Make in India, Startup India and Skill India campaigns which aim to boost economic growth and prosperity. He stressed the importance of reforms and progressive legislation saying delays in decision making can only harm development process. He underscored action at various levels for tackling climate change where pollution has reached alarming levels. President Mukherjee also said that complaint, demand and rebellion are also virtues of democracy. But achievements of our democracy should also be applauded. He stressed on the need to guard ourselves against violent and divisive forces. Our finest inheritance, the institutions of democracy, ensure to all citizens justice, equality, and gender and economic equity. When grim instances of violence hit at these established values, which are at the core of our nationhood, it is time to take note. We must guard ourselves against the forces of violence, intolerance, and unreason. The President not only praised India's democracy, constitution and its armed forces in his Republic Day Eve address, but also brought out the journey of India's economic progress. 
He also stressed on the need to foster an ecosystem to enable the fourth industrial revolution and better education as well as respect for women. He concluded his address with these words from Rabindranath Tagore. Move ahead, the roll of drums, announce your triumphal march with feet of glory. You shall cut out your own path, delay not, delay not. A new age dawns. DD News. Well, and to discuss uh, the President's address on the eve of the 67th Republic Day, we have with us in the studio Shekhar Ayer, political editor of the Deccan Herald, and Prafula Ketkar is the editor of Organizer. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being with us. We'll start with you, uh, Mr. Shekhar Ayer. Uh, this is on the eve of the 67th Republic Day. And what is the state of the Republic is what, to a large extent, the President did speak about. A lot to, to, to cheer about. Uh, strong democracy, taking India to become a rising power in the global uh, institutions of the world. I mean, and also, why is it a rising power? Because of the institutions of democracy that have taken our country forward. What would you say? Yes, absolutely. I think uh, the President's message is one of uh, they, I mean, reminding the citizens about where the country is headed. He spoke about uh, how at a time when, you know, economy is in trouble all over, yes. you have our economy uh, growing at 7.3%. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be difficult. Great things are happening. Big changes are happening. At the same time, there are things that still continue to worry us. And I think very importantly, he reminded people, because the way he concluded also, and he mentioned it in between also, mm -hmm. there is no more time for, you know, to allow our energy to be uh, uh, wasted on smaller issues. Rather, we must focus on higher things. And we do not have luxury of time. I think right. that's a big message, whether it's legislations like good and services tax, GST, or other legislation. There sure. seems to be somehow in the minds of politicians that mm -hmm. they can, you know, let it go on. You know, if it's not done, now we'll do it some other time. See, right. I think my understanding is, particularly with regarding goods and services bill, which he himself as a finance minister had uh, introduced it, he has been telling the political leaders across, whether it's from the government or the opposition or even from the Congress, right. that they need to set it and thrash it out. They can't Absolutely. keep on... You know, you know, these are my conditions, you implement them, otherwise we won't do it. Or okay. you did that, so we won't cooperate with you. You know, all those things, kind of thing, because he Absolutely. keeps talking about the delay, because he says, right. delay not, delay not, a new age dawns. He quotes Rabindranath Tagore. <laughs> Absolutely, I delay think, not. I think that's a very strong message, just ahead of the budget. Not only to the youth, because he was talking about the youth at that point of time when he, re when he was concluding. Uh, but uh, Mr. Ketkar, you know, he, the, the president starts his speech by paying tributes to the armed forces by all those who protect our nation and those who paid the supreme sacrifice. He, after all, he is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces and a, a very solemn and a nice way to start, would you yes, say? Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I think uh, it's a very um, pragmatic speech because on the one hand, of course, he started with paying tributes to the uh, brave soldiers because because of them many a times we we forget that you know uh, we have seen that in uh, 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 pathan court attack otherwise in peace times also we have right. seen many uh, flood like situation where they have played a great role uh, in an, in uh, rescue operations so it is our duty to you know remember them and as a commander in chief he has rightly paid tributes but I, I see this as a pragmatic speech because on the one hand he reminded us of three great challenges one is of uh, you know the economic challenge mm -hmm. global slowdown and on and we we have to take opportunity because india is only uh, shining star in this sure. uh, uh, gloomy economy secondly he spoke about the terror and uh, thirdly he spoke about the climate change issue right these three issues i think he marked as challenges but at the same time he spoke about our great tradition Absolutely. of inclusiveness he spoke about the inclusive schemes of the government so as Absolutely. as a head of the government, he, he, he rightly highlighted the flagship programs of the government which are much more inclusive. And that's why I see, uh, on the one hand, he is talking about the challenges, but he is still, you know, preparing us to face the challenges and the policy initiatives he is reviewing, how we can face these challenges. So right. I think it is a, a very, very... So Mr. Shekhar Ayer, he said that uh, 2015 was a year of challenges and he listed out the challenges uh, because of the weak global economy, 
also because of the un unusual weather uh, which has caused uh, you know droughts in some parts and floods in other parts of the country and despite all these these difficulties india is poised to become the fastest growing large economy of the world so we're doing some things right and he then he goes on to talk about the schemes that are succeeding mm -hmm. like jandan and the aadhar scheme where he says 19 crore bank accounts opened under pradhan mantri mm -hmm. jandan yojana the single largest exercise of financial inclusion in the world and then immediately in the next sentence he says sansad aadarsh gram yojana aims to create model villages then he talks about digital india and then fasal bima yojana all of that all together uh important to understand that you know when india is growing at 7.3 or 7.4% it's taking everybody along absolutely and you see one thing which is must be understood about the president's address see these are there are two speeches that the president makes one is on the eve of the republic day mm -hmm. and the other is on the eve of independence day now those two speeches because there is a third speech which he makes at the beginning of Of Every year uh, addresses the parliament. parliament yes. That is essentially the the voice of the union government, government which That's comes right. through the president when he addresses. Now these two speeches broadly reflect what the president himself feels as the head of the state about what his That's government right. is doing right. and where the country. So therefore, when he says, you know, when he talks about the the problems that the economy is facing right now, mm -hmm. the global uh, slowdown and the other problems that we face because of natural calamities, droughts and floods. See the he says, look. you know the challenges are there but at the same time india is building and implementing strategies to solve this problem in right. a way there is a big endorsement for what the modi government is doing yes because often people have you know highlighted the fact that you know president speech and tried to so look this is the way he is pointing out to the government but here when it comes to major flagship programs whether yes. it is jandan yojana and he has taken note of this crop insurance absolutely which which is this uh, which is considered is the biggest thing to you know relieve the agrarian stress yes. the, the the farmers have been you know we we have heard stories about farmers committing suicide yes. because of crop failure and he says this is the most important thing that has happened absolutely so several things are in the pipeline some some things have already happened so therefore we are looking forward to a time when all this is bound to give you result absolutely and in the next uh, paragraph the president goes on to talk about make in india startup india and then the national skill development mission which he says envisages to uh, skill 300 million youth by mm. the year 2022 mm. so again with the whole inclusive approach and uh, as uh, mr shekha ayer says uh, you know these are i mean putting in place really the road map mm. for this growth that india is going to take place that's going to take place for india yes absolutely see uh, as as a, as a um, he has been finance minister he right. knows uh, you know he he spoke about the you know the the doubts investors have in investing now in markets so what is the strength he is basically talking about india's strength and that is human resource right quality human resource is going to encash this opportunity for india mm -hmm. and if we really want to make this uh, you know uh, india's uh, century or asian century in reality mm -hmm. then perhaps we have to make this program successful and that's why he specially highlighted startup india program right in separately that will foster in innovation and encourage new age entrepreneurship he 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 is confident about that Absolutely. and that's why uh, you know uh, this is a kind of giving hope on this uh, republic day eve that there is a opportunity for business and improving competitiveness in the domestic industry yes. and that's why he is talking about all these programs with special emphasis on startup and, and uh, skill india program absolutely and uh, mr ayer he also goes on to say that you know when the country is progressing like this there will be doubters there will mm. be people who will mm. complain mm. and rebel and this is part of democracy and one should uh, be allowed to have their views but uh, with investments in infrastructure manufacturing health education science and technology we are positioning ourselves well for achieving these higher growths so he also says that while you know you can have this voice of dissent uh, the country is moving forward in any case yeah because i think that's also very important you know uh, when the people are actually taking decisions and trying to improve economy there will be critics there will be people who are who will be skeptics there will be people who are doubters as the word he uses but 
that should not uh, you know uh, deter us from what we are doing at yes. the same time and we should not think that you know th the fact that these voices are there so and they are disturbing us that should not be we should view those voices mm -hmm. also as virtues of a democracy right you don't hear such voices in china right absolutely you know, where there is nobody to stop i mean okay. they could be making any number of historical blunders quote unquote but there is nobody to say that so here let them i mean let them say what they have to say there's no problem with that sure but let's remember that whatever is being put in place as he says you know we are pushing for a higher growth which will the next 10 to 15 years yes i mean help us eliminate as poverty. i said earlier this is exactly what the modi government has been doing i mm -hmm. mean the modi government has been trying to i mean looking at two ways you know removing those bottlenecks that have already crippled the system are there are steps to you know give more energy to the system sure Right, and uh, he goes on to say then, Mr. Ketkar, that uh, we need reforms, and the forces of growth need these reforms, but uh, obviously with a clear reference to what's happening in Parliament, uh, you know, it is the bounden duty of the lawmakers to ensure that legislation is passed. A spirit of accommodation, cooperation, and consensus building should be preferred. Uh, you know, the preferred mode of decision making. This is what he says, and it's very clearly mentioned. Yes, I think there are two uh, messages for constructive polit politics in this uh, uh, th his address. Uh, when he speaks about, you know, uh, there will be occasional doubters and betters, and let us continue to complain, demand, or yes. rebel. He adds that let us also applaud what our democracy has achieved. That's right. We have been generally pessimistic about what we are, but if we clear, if we really see, you know, when we started, what what was the condition in our neighboring countries, what what, what has been happening in Afri uh, African countries, right. who got uh, independence almost at the same time. Sure. We have sustained as a democracy. We have built our own institutions. We have been guiding force as largest mm -hmm. democracy to many countries, and I think he is calling everybody to cherish that achievement. That is, Absolutely. I think, a very important message. At the same time, he is telling our politicians that dialogue is the method to resolve differences. They, we have a tradition of democratic institutions. We have a tradition of consensus building. Mm -hmm. So you can have issues. You can discuss and debate. But you know, indirectly, he is suggesting all political parties that you know, obstructing parliamentary procedures or legislative procedures is not an option we can afford. Right. So I think this is a sure. clear-cut message. On the one hand, at social level, what we should cherish, and at, at, at the for the political class, he's saying that we need to evolve dialogue process for consensus building right. so that legislative and reform right. process and, can go together. And then, Mr. Shekhar Ayer, he brings on the, the philosophical argument, uh, saying that uh, the objective of rational consciousness is, uh, uh, as well as for our moral universe, is peace. It's the primary objective. It's the primary objective. And then he goes to find it to say that the 21st century uh, should have been the century where we uh, should be eliminating poverty. It's a great opportunity to eliminate poverty for the world. But what has we got ourselves plagued with? It is terrorism. And he goes on to describe terrorism as an insane, uh, uh, it's inspired by insane objectives, uh, bottomless depths of hatred. There is no good or bad terrorism. It is just pure evil. I mean, very clearly mentioning all this. And this is the scourge of our society and the world. And uh, I mean, it, uh, before that, he was talking about dialogue. And then he goes on after that to talk about the neighbors and then dialogue also to deal with this kind of issue. And we clearly see that, you know, terrorism is emanating from one of our neighbors. Yeah, the president is, uh, I think, uh, first time uh, sort of alluded to what is happening in West Asia particularly the problem of IS. Mm -hmm. Not a day passes without uh, you know, several news reports, both from what is happening in that region and its tentacles being you know, sought to be spread to other parts of the world. And we just, uh, on the eve of this Republic Day preparations, we saw huge security arrangements and an, uh, NIA conducting uh, several raids and uh, trying to follow up on people, misguided youths, who are being lured into this this kind of thing which he calls it the savage monster because right. no corner can now consider itself safe. You know, there was a time, I remember, you know, when the Al-Qaeda problems started, LK Advani has, uh, the then Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister, made a statement in Parliament that, you know, we can safely say that mm -hmm. Al-Qaeda doesn't have anything here. I mean, sure. it doesn't have a footprint. Now, the same thing cannot be said of this new problem right. because people are being lured 
by you know some grand promises of heaven and hell you know uh, uh, through um, internet right. so therefore he says look this is an unprecedented turbulence across regions Absolutely. and we need to fight them and mind you he says no room to think that bad terrorism and good terrorism mm. and this is a message to pakistan right because essentially there you have seen you have a country which says that it is you know sure. taking on the terrorists who are creating problems in their own country but that is, those are the people who are you know on the western borders not sure. on those who are sure. who are being harbored Absolutely. there and being used for attacks in india true but mr ketkar uh, while he says that uh, there is a civilized way to bridge disagreement which is dialogue ideally mm -hmm. and uh, there should be a uh, continual engagement he said we cannot discuss peace under the shower of bullets which is again the stated policy uh, because we I mean, we uh, well to deal with this issue of terrorism or to deal with any form of the civilized ways through dialogue. And we are a civilized nation. We are a, a, the, a growing uh, country with emerging power. But again, we have to at least you know assert ourselves that you cannot have peace under the shower of bullets. It is it is very significant, especially when uh, you know uh, the uh, French president is here as a as right. a guest of honor, absolutely, and he has shown commitment to fight against uh, terror. Uh, you know, he basically uh, is reiterating what India stands for. India always said that dialogue with everyone, it is our civilizational wisdom that right. we believe that all, all faiths can live together. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, this idea of acceptance of everybody has been our you know, foundational principle of our civilization. He has reiterated that. And that's why he said that under the shadow of terror, any dialogue is not possible. So it is a sure. clear-cut message. But going ahead of that, what he is mentioning is much more significant, and that is a much more clear uh, message to Pakistan, I believe. Yes. He says that subcontinent have a historic opportunity. opportunity yeah. And he speaks about not only geostrategic, but ev even emotional inheritance. That's right. We have to, we have to somehow, you know, uh, cross over that emotional uh, resolve the complex edges yes, of our emotional yes, yes, yes. Uh, of our emotional and geopolitical inheritance yes. that's what he says so and the, then, yes. the, 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 he is basically mentioning to agony of a partition and now in, in the right. 21st century when this is a common challenge we have to come together and speak with sincerity right that that message Absolutely. of sincerity you know you you cannot right. have Absolutely. double standards of good terrorism and bad terrorism on on the issue of this uh, terrorism on, based on, on humanity yeah, because he mentions humane uh, way of dealing with be defined as by by the humane spirit and not by our worst in by the worst instincts of human beings Absolutely. so this is what in fact the prime minister also did say just uh, yesterday yes. at chandigarh mm -hmm. and uh, mr shekhar after that he goes on to talk about uh, the 2015 being the hottest year of the uh, on the uh, warmest year on the pl on the planet on record and we need multiple levels of urban planning, use of clean energy, changing the mindsets of people. Uh, this is also very significant because the uh, government of India is moving towards this, you know, with terms, with, uh, with full force in terms of renewable energy, the solar alliance. Uh, how do you see this? Yeah, I, I, I think the point uh, the, pre the president is emphasizing is, well, the government will do all that needs to be done in terms right. of bringing in new mm -hmm. laws, bringing in, trying to uh, usher in new technologies. But right. at the same time, I think he says, look, all this calls for a change of mindset for the people. Absolutely. And and then then it has to be done at every level. Every citizen must feel that he must do something for to contribute to the to to, to nurture environment and protect uh, right you know, against uh, this climate changes. That would need sacrificing. Absolutely. I mean whether it is you use sure. your automobiles less or whether you use more cleaner fuels or you you bring in technology uh, say like the government has already decided on. Bharat uh, six right. uh, norms. Yes. You know, though the you know auto manufacturers we seem, we seem are to be running short of time, so let's move on. Uh, he, uh, the concluding p paragraph mm -hmm. of the president's speech was that love for the motherland is the basis of all progress, mm -hmm. and this was focused on the education aspect. Mm -hmm. I mean, in education, we seem to be lagging behind the president, the visitor of all our universities, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he he seems to be very keen that Indian universities uh, you know find their place in the world and uh, become world class universities. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and he talks about the fourth industrial revolution, which is actually uh, the digital revolution, where we are already using systems which are embedded within us, and uh, uh, we have to prepare ourselves to be in this in this revolution. So he's wanting our education to reach that standard. Absolutely. He what you know uh, he is 
uh, quoting no other than the most revered teacher that's right. that is uh, Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan. Radha that's right. And what he speaks about the the free creative man who can battle against historical circumstances and adversaries uh, uh, adversities of nature. I think this is very important message because somehow the the legacy of education we inherited from the British, some we have created those boxes, and right. we we are not nurturing this creative mind. Okay. Now with uh, you know advent of technology, the way innovations are coming up, especially from tier two cities, rural areas, we have to boost them. Absolutely. So. He is basically integrating the idea he started with that, you know, if we have to challenge, then Skill India and all those programs have to be successful. And if those have to be successful, sure. then our education has to be reformed and has to be more creative and competitive. And Absolutely. that's why this, this message is very critical. Uh, we've run short of time. One last word from you, uh, Mr. Shekhar Iyer. Uh, also, the generational change has happened because India is a young country. Uh, with the majority of its population young. As a result of that, youth has moved to take the center stage. And then he quotes Tagore, which you had quoted right at yes, the start. And, and there is a, there's a, they are impatient. They are waiting for that uh, yes. the big moment when you know a lot of opportunities can be created. The huge potential can be tapped Absolutely. to make this country great. Right, we leave it there. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us here Thanks. on this special Thanks discussion. Well, President Pranab Mukherjee said that the love for the motherland is the basis of all progress and acknowledging India's youthful population, he said, a generational change has happened. With the youth taking center stage and quoting Tagore, he concluded by saying, with feet of glory, you shall cut out your own path. Delay not, delay not, a new age dawns. We leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Namaskar.